Lieutenant and Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces, Your Excellency Professor Kidure Kindiki, Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Chief Justices Emeritus, and our visiting Chief Justices, Your Excellency Prime Cabinet Secretary, Honorable Musaria Mudavadi, Allow me also to acknowledge the protocol that has been set and abide by it and recognize my brother and sister judges from the Supreme Court, from all the courts and all the visiting justices and our esteemed members of the Judicial Service Commission, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. On behalf of the Supreme Court of Kenya, I am most delighted to welcome you all to this conference as we commemorate 12 years since the establishment of the Supreme Court of Kenya. Allow me to particularly single out for special mention and recognition my brother and sister Chief Justices and judges from other jurisdictions who have traveled from across the continent and the world to join us for this conference. Let us appreciate our esteemed guests. The theme of the conference, reflecting and introspecting on the Supreme Court of Kenya's jurisprudence, 12 years of defending the Constitution, captures the dual purpose of our conference, which is to celebrate the milestones we have achieved while critically examining the journey we continue to chart as Kenya's apex court and the ongoing commitment to uphold justice, to uphold constitutionalism, and to uphold the rule of law. At the heart of this conference is the idea that institutions matter. Institutions are the anchors of our democratic aspirations. The establishment of the Supreme Court as the ultimate interpreter and guardian of the Constitution embodies the expectation that the Supreme Court provides stability, certainty, and predictability in resolving the inevitable conflicts that arise within our society. Therefore, we are affirming the idea that our future lies in building strong and robust institutions that will serve as the catalysts for the national progress and development. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, over the past 12 years, the Supreme Court has played a transformative role in shaping both Kenya's jurisprudence and shaping our country's social political development. This court's landmark judgments have influenced the daily lives of Kenyans while reinforcing the core principles of our democracy. Through hearing and determining four presidential election petitions over the last three election cycles, the court has set critical benchmarks for conducting free, fair, and transparent elections. Likewise, through the landmark advisory opinions on devolution and the relationship between the bicameral houses of parliament, the Supreme Court has developed guiding frameworks that clarify interactions between the National Assembly and the Senate, reinforcing devolution as a cornerstone of our transformative constitution. Furthermore, in defining the parameters for constitutional amendments in the BPI case and establishing principles of public participation in the BAT and recently in the Finance Act cases, the court's jurisprudence has strengthened the democratic foundations of governance 
and harmonizing the judiciary's benchmark on the areas of public participation that still requires parliamentary action. The court's decisions have also directly addressed issues of land rights, human rights, social and economic justice, and family law. In the same vein, the courts have addressed housing rights jurisprudence in the Me Too Bell cases, which reflects the court's commitment to socioeconomic rights. The courts uh, has set jurisprudence guiding the families on how to help hold the family as the cornerstone of our society. In these and countless other judgments, the Supreme Court has affirmed its role as a transformative agent in the society. Despite the inevitable pitfalls of perception, all capture that come as a result of the court's invitation to address political questions, the court's jurisprudence has purposefully honest the Constitution as a powerful tool to promote the well-being of individuals and driving societal transformation for the common good. Notably, the decisions of the Supreme Court of Kenya have garnered significant respect and citation across the region and beyond. This recognition in the global legal community underscores the court's maturity into a respected institution whose well-reasoned judgments contribute to the evolving discourse on the law and justice worldwide. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, the journey of the Supreme Court has not been without challenges as explained by the Honorable Lady Justice Joki Dongo. But as we strive to deepen jurisprudence and protect the Constitution, the court is often called to balance divergent interests and expectations while upholding the law. It is important to appreciate that the Supreme Court's jurisdiction, to a large extent, has a political dimension given that this court handles matters touching on governance, the exercise of political power, and presidential election petitions. The court inevitably gets drawn into disputes relating to the exercise of a political mandate. And this has led to the court being subjected to political verification and being a target of political rhetoric over the past three electoral cycles. I want to take this opportunity to assure Kenyans that in the discharge of our mandate, we do not get drawn into making political decisions. We look for legal solutions for political disputes. The judges are politically neutral and are concerned with only determining the legal and evidential issues before the court, irrespective of their political ramifications. Going back to the history that informed the jurisdiction vested in the Supreme Court, particularly the exclusive jurisdiction to hear and determine presidential election disputes, there is need to sustain public confidence and trust in the Supreme Court. Without a court to turn to for resolving political disputes, our country will risk being left without an institution to arbitrate and resolve these disputes that involve politics and governance. And these disputes have the potential to tear down the country. I therefore urge political prayers and other Kenyans to reinforce and build public confidence in the work of the judiciary and the Supreme Court. Recently, 
I have been reflecting on the role of the three arms of government and the need for each arm to shield the other from taking on mandates that are separated by the Constitution so that we can truly live by the spirit and principle of separation of power. When courts are invited to deal with political questions presented in a legal nature, there is an inevitable risk of being drawn into perceptions that plague political play. Although this is an Anglo-Saxon problem, as we see in jurisdictions that require some political jurisdiction from their apex courts, we must, and indeed, we do approach every issue with legal lens. It is important that political institutions exhaust all political solutions and only turn to courts as a matter of last resort. And when I look back at what happened to us in 2007, when we were visited by post-election violence, when I look at what happened in 2017, and also 2022, the Mandamano, and the creation of the Nusumukate or half rough bread government, the handshake government, and now the broad based government, I always wondered had we sat down under our provisions of Article 159 to reason together and resolve the dispute before we went into fighting each other, we would have been very far as a country. So let us embrace the provisions of 159 and do NDR or what we are calling court and exam mediation or alternative justice system to resolve the disputes that visit us especially politically. We have resolved those three cycles of disputes as the Supreme Court, but the answer given by the Supreme Court is not what carried the day. What happened at the table through negotiations in those arrangements, including the creation of the broad-based government after the dispute in 2022 elections, is testament that political solutions to political problems is possible. Although courts remain ready to delve into complex legal issues arising out of political processes, we must require all institutions to exhaust constitutional alternative dispute resolution avenues to strengthen the cohesion in our society. In today's rapidly evolving world, New dynamics continue to reshape the legal, political, and social landscapes in which we operate. Challenges such as deepening social inequality, the urgent realities of climate change, political competition, which introduce complex issues that demand careful navigation and thoughtful judicial responses. The advent of emerging technologies also bring both opportunities and the risk, particularly in the realm of information, misinformation, and disinformation, especially as they proliferate through social media and have the potential to influence public opinion, disrupt democratic processes, and even affect judicial independence. For the Supreme Court, to continue fulfilling our mandate effectively, close interinstitutional and collaboration and support are vital. Upholding the rule of law and protecting constitutional rights is a collective responsibility that calls for cooperation and respect among the judiciary, the legislature and the executive and other state agencies. I therefore call on collaborative relationship that will strengthen our resilience of our legal system and allow the Supreme Court and the wider judiciary to serve as a true pillar of justice. 
as an institution of this nature, we rely on the support we receive from the members of the public. Through their conf confidence, we are also able to serve the Kenyans while aware that the mandate we exercise come from them. Through this conference, we are also honoring the work of distinguished men and women, justices past and present, who have contributed to building the jurisprudence of this court. Each justice, as Justice Joki has enumerated, has shown that the tremendous responsibility of safeguarding the Constitution and ensuring that justice is served without fear, favor, or prejudice. I can say it publicly that the justices of the Supreme Court are men and women committed to upholding the values and principles of our Constitution. This commitment is not merely rhetorical. It is a responsibility that each of them carries and one that we do not take rightly. Their work is often solitary and demanding, yet they consistently uphold their judicial oath and do so with honor and integrity. I therefore wish to introduce my esteemed colleagues serving on the Supreme Court bench, the Honorable Justice Philomena Mwiru, who is the Vice President 